Alright guys, so now that we know who is starting in this game and who isn't starting in this game, let's talk about what I want to see and what I expect from the upcoming game tomorrow. I will be live streaming it, just keep that in mind. And as always, we'll be going play by play and really breaking it down. But starting off right away, we learned from Coach Taylor yesterday that Travion Williams will not be in this upcoming game. Which means the starters are going to be Chase Brown and Chris Evans. We also found out that the op the starters in general will not be in this game at all. Which means everyone you see in this category 1 here is going to be out of this upcoming game. Offense and defense. Meaning that it's going to start at player 2 or the second category and go straight down. All the way to the very bottom here with all the backups playing. So... With that being said, we're going to see a lot of playtime from all these guys, right? Now, let's be honest. Week 1, we saw the backups. We didn't see any starters. Week 2, we saw one series of the defense and Jonah Williams, and that was it. So, this is not really anything too crazy different than what we have seen so far in the preseason. But it is nice to know that, you know, everyone is getting as much playtime as humanly possible. We also know in this game that uh, Reed Sinet is going to be playing it. And so it's not just going to be Trevor Simeon and Jake Browning. It's going to be Reed Sinet too. Obviously the game will probably start off with Jake Browning and then go to Trevor Simeon and then go to Reed Sinet. So what do I expect in this game? Well, starting off right away, let's go through each positional group, right? <clears throat> Listen, the quarterbacks, I just expect Jake Browning to keep continue what he's been doing so far throughout preseason. Which is he's very consistent on just getting the job done and playing very average. I mean, again, he's not playing spectacular, but he's very serviceable. He's moving the ball down the field. He's correctly identifying the defense, and he's finding the open guy. That's kind of what I expect. Trevor Simeon, I don't expect anything because he hasn't looked good in preseason so far. He looked very mid-slash-average, and there's nothing special I can really take away from him. So at this moment in time, I really just expect him to do his best. <clears throat> and, you know, if he makes the team, he makes the team. But I don't think he will. I think Jake Browning is going to be the backup quarterback. Reed Sinet, I mean, he's an XFL guy who's now getting a chance with the Bengals. I don't really expect anything. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. He'll probably play the fourth quarter and that's it. And all I expect from him really is just make accurate passes to our receivers, please. You know, give every single player in this roster a chance to make this roster. And, you know, just don't mess up in that category, right? I'm not expecting you to go in there and throw 300 yards, but just throw some accurate passes. And, you know, if you can't read the defense or there's a problem reading the defense, just <clears throat> do your best. I'm not expecting much from him. Now, for the running back situation, because obviously these two guys on the right-hand on the right -hand side here, Jacob Sarris and Calvin Tyler Jr., Hasn't really gotten any carries. They've just been pretty much, you know, special teamers, I would say. It's possible they get some carries in this upcoming game. And the reason why I say that is because of the fact that we saw, you know, Reed Sinet now is going to be getting some touches or some play time. It's very possible that they also give these guys some, you know, touches in the backfield. So both of these guys could possibly play the fourth quarter. But from... Chris Evans and Chase Brown, because they, let's be honest, realistically speaking, they made the team, okay? Let's let's be honest, they're probably not going to get cut. All I expect from them in this game is really just be consistent and don't fumble the football. And what I mean by consistency is run the play correctly. You know, pass block correctly in Chase Brown and Chris Evans' spot here. Both of them are pretty decent pass blockers. Pretty good runners with the football. Just don't get hurt. That's pretty much all I could take away from those guys. Because they've already solidified themselves as, you know, the backups here, right? They solidify their spots on the roster. Now, from these guys, if these guys start getting touches in the fourth quarter, all I say for those guys is, listen, go out there and make a show. Put on a show versus the commanders here. Because you guys can really earn a roster spot, not with our team, but with someone else's team, if you go out there and put them up some big numbers, you got to keep in mind, as Coach said many times, it's all about consistency. It's not about, you know, 
one big game. It's not about one separate situation where it's like, oh yeah, we went out there and played great football. It's all about consistency, playing good every single week. So this one game, again, against the Commanders, isn't going to make a name for themselves enough that they're going to make our roster, but it's very possible they make someone else's roster. Now, Coach was very clear about the tight end position, saying that Mitchell Wilcox, you know, it's not 100% he's going to be the number two tight end. And neither with Drew Sample even making the roster. It's not 100% anyone is going to make the roster. So, for the tight end group, because my personal opinion is I feel like the three you see on the screen right now is the three we're going to keep. Drew Sample, Mitchell Wilcox, and Irv Smith. For the other guys, again, because Wilcox will be getting his first action in this upcoming game. Um, and unless, again, barring injury, knock on wood, he'll probably make the team in the end. Um, for the other guys, uh, I know the only guy that really has shown off in preseason was Tanner Hudson. I would say if I'm Tanner Hudson here, he is 29 years old, so he's up there in age. It's not like he has many years left in the NFL, I feel like. But just hope you got the practice squad, bro. Just hope you get on the practice squad, and that's really going to be my best option for you. There's not much really you can show in this game. You had you caught four passes, 29 yards in your first week. Then obviously week two you had concussion. So well week one you had concussion, and then week two you miss, and now week three you're playing. Just try your best to make the practice squad, and hopefully you do make the practice squad. And if an injury happens throughout the season, we bring you up and we can use you. But other than that, there's nothing really special that we're gonna learn from him. Now, the receiving core is where things are going to get interesting, right? Because, obviously, right now, it's almost solidified. It's going to be Chase, T, Tyler, um, Tyler Boyd. It's going to be Yoshi, Trent Irwin, and Chuck Sizzle, right? That's pretty much a guaranteed six receivers that's going to be on this roster. If I had to bet money today, I would say those guys 100% make the roster. But there's a chance we keep a seventh receiver. And if we keep a 7th receiver, that does now come down to either Stanley Morgan, Kwame, Trent Taylor, um, Carter, Cedric Jackson, or Mac Hippenhammer. And so far, I'll be honest, out of all those options, the guy who has stood out most to me, and I think probably you guys too, has been Cedric Jackson. Cedric Jackson was has been a fan favorite, uh, um, I would say, uh, not fan favorite, a player favorite for Jake Browning, and a lot of passes have been thrown by Trevor Simeon to him. So it's very possible he could, you know, sneak his way on this roster or press the squad based on how he's playing. And if he consistently does good in this upcoming game, he could continue doing that. Now, one thing I will say that in this upcoming game, Yoshi is something to look out for, is that, yes, he currently leads the Bengals all time now in most receptions in the preseason. And if he gets over 50 yards in this upcoming game, he'll have the most receiving yards of any Cincinnati Bengals player in all-time history in the preseason. So, Yoshi, you got to go out there and, and you know, deliver on that, my man. But we're going to see a lot of these guys all game long. Like, this is not going to be rotation. I saw somebody say, oh, you think it's going to be a limit, limited for Yoshi, limited for Charlie Jones? No. I don't see there any be any limited snaps for any guy after, again, this list right here. These are all going to be full-time guys in this game. These guys aren't playing. These guys are playing. So, I don't think they're going to go limited at all. I mean, Yoshi's a six-round pick, for peace sake. Same thing with uh, Chuck Sizzle. Maybe Chuck Sizzle gets a little bit limited because of his injuries. But other than that, I don't think Yoshi's going to get any less play time. And so far, Yoshi has gotten plenty of play time throughout training camp and uh, preseason so far. So, I expect it to continue. Now, for the offensive line, here's what I'm kind of expecting for the offensive line, right? Because this offensive line, the backup offensive line has looked absolutely awful, okay? They have not looked good. They have not looked top tier. This has been almost a laughing stock, right? And my guess is Jackson Carmen will be playing left tackle in this upcoming game. And then I'm going to guess what they're probably going to do is left tackle there. And then left guard will probably be Trey Hill. Center, I'm going to guess is Max uh, Sharpen. And then right guard will probably be Cody. No, no. Right guard will probably be 
Jackson Kirk Kirkland, and then right tackle will be Cody Ford. Now, keep in mind, that's going to change throughout the game, guys. So, again, that's how they start. But they might start for, like, two quarters. Like, um, not two quarters. They might do that for, like, a quarter and a half and then change it up completely. Put Cody Ford in different positions. This offensive line this game is going to just see who does best where, right? So far, and that's what we've been seeing for the last two weeks, pretty much, is that they've been trying to figure out who's the best at which position. Who's the best at right tackle? Who's the best at right guard? Who's the best at center? Left guard, left tackle. We saw Cody Ford was absolutely awful last week at right tackle. So now they're going to see, hey, is he going to be awful against the commanders? Is this consistent? Is that just one bad game? Right? It's all about all that kind of stuff. So that's that. Now on defense, Miles Murphy will play, but he probably will be limited because he's a first round pick and there's no reason to put him out there the whole entire game and get him hurt. But I will say, though, I want to see more pressures from Miles Murphy. And I'm expecting in this game that they're going to use him in the inside this game. So they've been using him in training camp in preseason as an edge rusher. I'm expecting him, and again, he did miss last week because of an illness. I'm expecting him to be more of an interior defense lineman this week and see what they can do with him there. So I'm expecting maybe not as much. I, I expect pressures, but not sacks. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. The rest of the defensive line. Oh, uh, Joseph Asai is not going to be playing. Um, so we're kind of going back over here. Terrell Basham is not going to play. He's hurt. Ray Johnson the third. This is the guy I will be looking out for this whole entire game. And the reason why is because the first game, he had a sack fumble. The second game, he had half a sack. And the third game now, I'm ready to see him go off because he's a guy who could sneaky, sneakily make the roster based on how he's played in preseason and training camp and made a name for himself. Same thing with Shaka Haywood. Shaka Haywood last week didn't really do anything special, but again, have another good game. You can easily do that. He has been the Mike so far in defense in his last two games. I want to see him continue to do that and continue to get better at that. I know Jeff Gunner is another guy a lot of people talk about and love. And I know Coach e himself has talked about Jeff Gunner. Uh, so far, Jeff Gunner actually, he's been playing pretty dang good on preseason. I'm not going to lie to you. But Zach Carter is the guy I want to talk about here because he's the guy who I think he led. He has the most quarterback pressures in the NFL in preseason. Like, he has been an absolute monster. The best, no, past, best pass rush win rate in uh, preseason so far. He's been an absolute monster. But again, like I said, not expecting too much from this defense. Um, when it comes to this defense so far throughout preseason, they have not been that crazy great backup-wise. But again, we are showing vanilla defenses, so it's not like we're you know going all out showing our best unit. But all I'm expecting from this defense going into this game is just do your job and be consistent and make a name for yourself, right? This is the last chance you have to make a name for yourself for this roster this practice squad, or someone else's roster. So that's all I really will say. I know they asked Coach about the defensive back room and how it's limited because of injuries slash, you know, players getting banged up and the starters not being in now. And he said it's something we're going to just have to deal with. And it definitely will be an interesting situation. It means a lot more of these guys are going to get a lot of play time. Sidney Jones still dealing with injuries, so we're going to see a lot of Jalen Davis, a lot of Alan George, etc. So guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions, but again, I will be live tomorrow for this game. Peace out.